Let's talk about Hunter x Hunter Chapter 403, but if you're not caught up, spoilers beware. Alrighty y'all, we got a few different things I want to talk about here, and we're just going to run through them one by one, not the least of which is the Hulkenberg balsam milko situation. But first, I just wanted to say I'm not going to recap or summarize the chapter in this video. I already put out a whole video detailing Chapter 403, so be sure you check out that first if you haven't yet. But now let's talk about this. I think it's fairly obvious that Hulkenberg did indeed hit Balsamilka with his arrow and is thus possessing him right now. This is a theory we talked about back at the end of 402, and I think everything points to that being the case, especially this panel here where, you know, it shows Hulkenberg behind Balsa here as if that's who's truly speaking, right? So let's analyze this situation and try and remember all of the aspects of this technique that we're actually aware of. You got to remember that when Hulkenberg first used this, he didn't really know what to expect, nor did he know what was going to happen to the person he used it on, in this case, Balsamilko, right? But after that very first use, he hypothesized four different possibilities for what would happen to the victim. One, they just straight up die, right? Their soul is destroyed. The other possibility is that they swap places, meaning in this case, Balsamilko would be in Hulkenberg's body. The third possibility is that the soul never leaves, and so Balsamilko's soul would still just be in his own body, but kind of subdued or in the back seat. And finally, the fourth option was that the soul just goes somewhere else entirely. It's not still in Balsamilko, it's not in Hulkenberg, but it's just out in the ether or out in some other random vessel. Basically, this is the fourth mega option for every other possibility, right? So we also know that since this happened with Shikaku, they did the experiment where he had him, you know, pop himself in order to see what would happen to Shikaku's soul at that point, but also we know that the ability has been used at the very least one additional time in order to go into Vict, the uh, Benjamin soldier that we also saw in chapter 403 that was doing the sign language, right? So Hulkenberg at least has another data point here. At the very least, we know that Hulkenberg has just gotten more skilled and adept at using this ability because he originally posited that it might be random which of his followers' souls get imbued into the new body. However, in this Balsam Milko situation, he clearly chose himself, so he's exhibiting more and more control over this. We also know that the body of Hulkenberg's follower that gets transferred into the new body essentially just falls unconscious, and brainwaves seem to indicate that they are in a state of sleep. So, if the other person, again, Balsam Milko in this situation, was in there, they're essentially in a coma. As Hulkenberg is trying to figure all this out, he basically comes up with a plan and says, I see, I think we can think of it in 12 parts. So he has some sort of idea to figure out more about this ability, but we just aren't privy to his plan. The only other data point we get in this regard is after he has Shikaku pop himself, we see Sumidori wake back up. So Sumidori was the follower who fell into a coma when his soul was transferred into Shikaku. And I know it's probably getting confusing with all of the names here. But once Sumidori wakes up, they test him by having Hulkenberg ask, what's your affiliation and ID number? Because they want to see, is this Sumidori returned to his original body? Or is this Shikaku and their souls did in fact swap? Now, of course, Tagashi doesn't let us see the result of this little experiment, but I'm wondering how much we can glean from this single panel, because all he says is Prince Hulkenberg, very slowly, right? And I think we could explain this just from grogginess of waking up out of a coma after your soul gets transferred, right? But it could also be reasonably explained by this being Shikaku, who is confused that he is now sitting face to face with Hulkenberg. Like, it could just be Prince Benjamin's soldier trying to make sense of this weird situation he all of the sudden finds himself in. We don't know. But Prince Hulkenberg does know, at the very least, whether or not a swap occurred. And that's what's important here, because there's no way to test for option one or four. That's just going to be impossible. But based on his ID number question, he knows whether or not swaps occur. And that's all that really matters for his current situation, because he either knows that Balsamilko now is in his body and will awaken whenever he and Balsamilko's body dies, or he knows that there just is no swap and he will return to his own body when Balsamilko Milko dies. And whichever of those two options it is will greatly influence the direction of what's about to happen here. 
Now, in addition to trying to figure out the soul swap mechanics of his ability, we also know that Hulkenberg was interested in discovering what happens to Nin abilities of people who swap, because he specifically asked for a Nin specialist that had the ability to check and confirm for Nin abilities to help them in this experiment, right? Meaning Hulkenberg wanted to test if I swap bodies with somebody, will I still have access to my original ability? Will I have access to the possession arrow? Now with all of that out of the way, let's examine our two possibilities. And first, let's assume that there is a body swap, meaning Balsamilko's soul is now in Hulkenberg. What does that mean for what Hulkenberg will do? Now, if this is the case, I think we can pretty confidently conclude that Hulkenberg can still use his ability in other bodies, meaning he can cast the Possession Arrow as Balsamilko, because otherwise he would be trapped forever, right? And I don't think that's a situation that he would take lightly. And you got to remember, in 403, he didn't fire the arrow out of desperation. He didn't even fire it as a reaction to something Balsamilko did. No, Hulkenberg was cold and calculated with this play, and I think that makes more sense as a man who knows that he can still swap afterwards if he wants to. Also, if Balsamilko is now in Hulkenberg, I think this line of dialogue makes more sense as well because Hulkenberg, and this is going to get so confusing, but Hulkenberg in Balsamilko's body tells Benjamin that he'll show him absolute proof of his success tonight. And that absolute proof would be the corpse of Hulkenberg because that was his mission to take him out, right? So if he's planning on showing absolute proof, then that means he's planning on showing him Hulkenberg's dead body, which he would also only actually do if it was a foregone conclusion that he could never go back, meaning he'll just kill his old body with Balsam Milko's soul in it and use that as a way to get Benjamin to trust him again. And again, assuming he can cast the arrow while from Balsam Milko's body, then that's really no issue. It's still a big sacrifice to say goodbye to your old body, but he could just swap into another one of the prince's bodies and essentially, you know, still have his claim to the throne and accomplish what he needs to. Specifically, he may be planning on swapping into Benjamin's body and just piloting that for the rest of the succession war. Just imagine Hulkenberg in Benjamin's body, not only with Hulkenberg's original Nin Beast and the Possession Arrow, but also Benjamin's Nin Beast and all of Benjamin's Nin abilities, which he inherits from his soldiers, right? He would have like more techniques than Krolo. Now, granted, we have no idea how these interactions would work and if he would retain both Nin Beasts or anything like that, but it's just interesting to think about. Another interesting thing to think about is what Benjamin's Nin Beast would do when confronted with a Hulkenberg-possessed Balsamilko. Would the Nin Beast be able to tell? Would he be able to dispel it? Because we did see Benjamin's Beast dispel Fugetsu's little curses that were trailing her, so perhaps its ability has something that could just negate whatever Hulkenberg's been doing. Doing. It's certainly interesting to think about. And then, if it did recognize that Hulkenberg was in Balsamilko, would it be able to do anything given the rule that the Nin Beasts can't attack other princes? There's just so many weird possibilities here. But anyway, to recap, if the Possession Arrow forces a soul swap, then Hulkenberg probably intends on sacrificing his original body in order to wreak havoc and then switch into a new prince's body to continue his own quest. Now, if there is no body swap, then I think the plan becomes a bit more straightforward here. Hulkenberg is just going to do whatever he can while in Balsamilko's body, perhaps wreak havoc, perhaps try to assassinate Benjamin, perhaps just to gather intel and sow discord, right? And then as soon as it's lights out for him, he will just simply pop back up in his own body and continue on his quest. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. However, this line of dialogue does cast some doubt on it because again, how does Hulkenberg plan on showing absolute proof of Hulkenberg's death if he's not truly dead. Now, maybe they could just lie and make it look like Hulkenberg's dead, even though he's really just in a coma or whatever. There's definitely possibilities here, but I think it's just slightly messier. Now, in this scenario, we don't have enough information to say whether or not Hulkenberg could use the possession arrow in Balsamilko's body because it wouldn't be as important for him to be able to because he wouldn't be stuck in this body forever otherwise, right? Because at some point, he'll return to his normal body, and so that just wouldn't be a concern the same way it would be if he was stuck in this body. 
Now, one thing interesting about this scenario, if Hulkenberg does end up returning to his own body, are the clear Christ parallels here, which seem to be something that Tagashi is setting up, as he's been no stranger to alluding to Christianity before. As you can see, Hulkenberg is often seen with specifically 12 people around him to contribute to his aura as his followers, right? Like the 12 disciples. And if this whole plan was to switch into Balsamilko, pretend his true body Body died and yet then he comes back it is very christ-like in the resurrection after three days situation so if that is a parallel or an illusion that Sagashi is setting up with hawkenberg then it would lean toward it being the no body swap scenario with him just returning to his own body at some point and this is just so crazy. It just shows how much of a master Tagashi is because both of these options offer such compelling possibilities and I would be so happy with either one. And I'm so curious which one it actually is. And I think that's just a testament to just the depth of this arc right now. It's, it's incredible. Also, just how terrifying is Hulkenberg's potential here? I know he was set up early on in the story to be like the good prince that perhaps a lot of people could rally behind, but I feel like Tagashi's setting him up for a dark turn, and like he may end up being everyone's worst nightmare, especially considering the cult-like following he is starting to establish, especially if he has the Christ-like resurrection part of his narrative actually happen, right? Just imagine the fanaticism that will soon surround Hulkenberg and just the absolute chaos and power he could wield. Like, if he's not actually a good dude with a pure heart, like, we're in trouble. And on that note, we need to talk about Kevin, aka the name of Hulkenberg's ability that was revealed in Chapter 403. It's formally called Grimal Les Dissonants, which is a reference to a conductorless orchestra, which I think the illusion there is pretty clear. In the same way Hulkenberg and all of his followers are kind of all equal in one, and that's how his ability works, and they're able to share the aura. He is similarly a part of a conductorless orchestra. He is not at the head of it. They are all the same, right? But what's interesting is the kanji that is used is the Japanese title of the novel, we need to talk about Kevin, which there was also a movie. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. This movie and novel are about a, like, psychopathic kid who ends up going on a shooting spree, if you catch my drift, and specifically uses a crossbow. So why is Tagashi likening Hulkenberg to a psychopath, right? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just for the crossbow symbolism, but I don't know. I just feel like we could be setting up for a very interesting antagonist in Hulkenberg and not the, you know, savior that he's being painted out to be. Not to mention the fact if he somehow ends up also being beyond Netero's child, but I don't even think he needs to be to be an antagonist, but that's just a whole other corkscrew we could throw in things. Anyways, we're coming up on 15 minutes in this video, and I plan on talking about like four or five different things from this chapter, but I think I'm just going to end it here and just have this video focus on the Hulk and Milko Balsenberg situation and you know we can keep things a bit more contained so let me know all of y'all's thoughts down below which of the two scenarios do you think it is and just hit me with all of your theories on this arc because I am loving this so so much